Hello again, it's Paul VK3HN. So I just wanted to go back over and, and revisit what it is I'm going to design here. So CW only, crystal controlled, so no microcontroller, no SI5351. It's going to be crystal oscillators for both receiver and transmitter. No VFO, so that means that the receiver is going to be fixed. And while this is not necessarily a great idea, fixed receive channels for working QRP from home, my thinking is that it's a different story when you're on a SOTA summit because you have the luxury of being able to spot. And once you've spotted on whatever frequency you announce, you have the, you have the chases come to you. So being on a fixed channel, receive and transmit is not such a drawback. QRP level power, so between 3 and 5 watts. As I mentioned, I'd like it to cover two bands. Where I live in the southeastern states, it's not always wise to go do an activation with just one band CW, one band, one mode. And you can find yourself in situations, particularly in the late morning or the early afternoon when propagation is not great, you might be stuck on 40 metres with a monobander or stuck on 20 metres. And you might get one or two calls, but you might find yourself struggling to get the four contacts. Whereas when I've had two bands with me, and typically they've been 40 and 20, I've really never had a problem getting four or more QSOs. And of course, it needs to be small. So they're the kind of objectives for this rig. And in this video, I want to cover the receiver. So in the last video, I showed this board here. This is a board from an old project which I got partially working but didn't complete. Just looking at it, this really has a lot of what you need for a direct conversion receiver, and not a bad one at that. The more I studied this, the more I realised that it really wasn't quite right. The first problem was that the dual op-amp audio amplifier, preamplifier and audio filter had a single ended input and uh, and that's a lot of a lot of the SA612 mixer designs do take a, an unbalanced audio off pin 4 or pin 5 and bring it single ended into the audio preamp but I've seen a number of designs where the detected audio from the SA612 on both pins 4 and pins 5 are brought into, in a balanced fashion, into the audio preamp first op-amp. And because this is going to be a DC, a direct conversion receiver, I have also seen that that arrangement with balanced audio tends to perform better in relation to hum, which DC receivers can be, can be prone to. There were some other issues with this board. I guess the main one was this TDA 2003. You don't need a 1980s car radio audio IC for a tiny little QRP CW transceiver that should really fit in your pocket and doesn't need to have a doesn't need to drive a speaker can be used with earbuds or lightweight headphones. So this really was overkill. When I power this up with no signal, the TDA2003 draws around 35 milliamps at 12 volts, which is not a ridiculous amount of power, but I mean it's probably 25, 30 milliamps more than a small, either a, um, an op-amp based audio output or an LM386 would draw. So this has huge headroom which will never be used. When I was just coupling noise into pin 1, the TDA2003 with no load was drawing 125 milliamps. So it's really overkill for, um, for what is needed in this design. The other factor is that I wasn't really happy with the shape of this board and I really wanted something that was going to be smaller. And now that I'm working predominantly in surface mount, I can build something that is smaller without stripping any more parts on it that's going back in the junk box. Well what I want to do with this project is I want to get the size right. So this is SPX, this is a four band 
uh, QRP CW fixed fixed channel transceiver, and I really want to kind of preserve this width to length ratio, so the aspect ratio of the shape of this case, but I want it to be about two thirds the size. And and if I lay it out carefully, there's really no reason why that can't be the case. I've come up with a sketch, a full scale sketch of a transceiver that is around 10 centimetres, um, not 13, so about 10 centimetres in length, 9.5 to 10, and uh, rather than being 7 centimetres wide, it is 5 centimetres. And that's roughly, so the length to width ratio is roughly the same length to width ratio of this case here. And I do like this form for a transceiver. Fits nicely into the pack, it just slides down like that. Um, nothing off the back panel, so you can sit it on a rock, sit it on a grassy mound, sit it that way. And of course there are so few controls. Um, in this case I've bought power and external speaker and uh, paddle and uh, Kia memory off to the side. But um, this rig is not going to have a Kia, so uh, it's, um, it's going to be simpler again. So at this point, this arrangement here becomes a kind of a template. And so now the challenge for me is to work out, assuming that I have a baseboard and a top board, so the boards are going to be sandwiched like this, overlaid, can I fit all of the parts of this uh, two-band CW transceiver onto the real estate, onto the area that is on offer if I uh, go with this kind of, uh, this physical size, if I work with these dimensions? I'm going to need a 7, 8, 12 regulator. I'm going to need two crystal oscillators, each with their own crystal and trimmers, etc. There'll be a small section of circuit board needed for the keyed buffer and switching. There'll be another area of the transmitter board required for the 3 by BS170 uh, PA and the um, quad gate driver, also the two low pass filters. And then on the receiver board, I'm going to need space for two band pass filters and some switching, a product detector, audio preamp, and audio power amp. So looking at this top board here and what I've done is I've allowed some space at 15 mil at the front between board and front panel for a keying socket, a miniature potentiometer for a, a, a loudness or volume control um, and, uh, and a BNC. And I do that just by just by holding the actual um, sockets or controls over the scale drawing and just marking up how far back they come. So this little 3.5 mil stereo switched socket, it actually comes back 14 or 15 mil once it's mounted on a front panel. So this board could butt right up against the back there. And these beautiful little uh, pots, these little miniature pots, they fit in in about 10 mil. So then the challenge is, can I get all of those transmitter parts onto this area of board. If not, I have to enlarge it. So I worked out that if I switch with one two-pole relay, two low-pass filters, I've got about that much room there. So what is that? That's about 22 millimetres to fit in the two low-pass filters. The BS170 PA and the gate driver could fill this area of the board. That's, another, that's 25 mil. And then I've got this area of the board here for the keying circuit and the DC switching circuit. That's about 30 mil. And I can probably get a 7, 8, 12 regulator up there. Now let's have a look at the second board. So this will be the receiver board. So I can really follow the same pattern. I can use another one of these miniature telco relays, which I've traced the pin, pin out, outline there. And I've got space there. I've probably got about... 30 to 32 mil to build a bandpass filter either side. Then I've got this middle section, another 30 mil or so 
for the audio preamp and or the product detector audio preamp and audio power amp. If there is to be an audio power amp, it's going to be an LM386. So that'll need an SA612, a dual op amp, which I can do in surface mount, and then an LM386. I don't think I have any LM386s in surface mount, so that'll have to be a full-size 8-pin um, dual inline package. That's pretty tight. I'm not even sure that I'm going to use an LM386 at this, at this time, but I need to have enough board space there to accommodate all of that. And then this back section here will have the two oscillators. Now they need a bit of space because I'm, my crystals are HC6U. They're not, they're not surface mount crystals. So they're gonna, the crystal and the trimmer are going to take up quite a lot of that space. The crystal will probably go here, trimmer here, and then um, surface mount oscillator. Or maybe I can arrange it mirror image so that the signals are coming, coming this way. Into onto a bus that goes into the product detector. I might be nuts trying to get all of this into such a small space. Now, this is the sort of challenge that I like. And if you don't consider the physical layout with the um, RF and the um, DC and uh, power layout, if you don't consider that and the controls, if you don't consider that all at the same time, then you end up kind of blowing it, it blowing your space budget. So the next challenge here is if, if we're going to have two boards, sandwich boards, one on the bottom, one on the top, so maybe, uh, or it doesn't matter, receiver or transmitter, um, the options for stacking them are either to use threaded spacers or to use 0.1 inch headers like this. And I've done this on a number of my projects, so if, if we insert we insert the 0.1 inch pin like that into the socket and if the top board sits there and the bottom and these these are bent over and soldered onto the copper side of the bottom board like that then we are dealing with a little bit of an allowance on the bottom we've got about seven to eight mil probably about eight mil yeah, about eight millimetres between the boards. The big advantage of doing this is that you can put a line of a line of these of the sockets across each end of the board, and then you can convey signals and power from the bottom board to the top board and vice versa. And you can still use you can still use conventional the same headers, but there is another form of these. 0.1 inch sockets and they're only about half the height. Actually on the bottom board you can you can take wires or signals on and off that bottom board if you use this 5 mil socket with a conventional 0.1 header and you might have to trim you might have to trim the tops off but uh, even if you end up putting a little bit of uh, insulative tape on the bottom side of the board on top, I have managed to successfully do this. All of that gets us to the two blanks. So here are two, two blanks. Those are the two boards that we'll build on. And they'll be spaced kind of roughly, roughly like that. This board is single-sided. And of course, when I etch these, they'll be copper up and the components, the surface mount components, will go straight onto the copper side. There's no need for a double-sided copper board for the board that goes on the bottom because I'm going to assume it's going to work in some sort of an aluminium case. So when you, have the, uh, when you mount the bottom board, it's just going to be, say, M2 screwed um, straight through a piece of 1.2 mil or 1.5 mil aluminium say there and there. So there's no point in having copper on the bottom. The board on top of it, however, benefits from being double-sided. So while I'm going to lay out the board with all of the components on the top side, I'll just leave the copper on the bottom side in place and make sure it's earthed through to the top side and then that becomes a screen. The only other comment that's worth noting is which one would be, so which board should be receiver 
and which board should be transmitter. If you're going to have a board with trim, trim pots and trim caps, sorry, um, you don't really want that one on the bottom if you can help it because you'll set it up, you'll set all the trimmers and the trim pots, etc., and then you'll plug the top board on and you've lost access to, the, to those uh, settings. If you can, it's best to have the trim pots and trim caps on the top board. So just looking at what it is we're accommodating here, if you look at the transmitter board, it's got low-pass filters, but low-pass filters don't have any adjustments in them. They're fixed. Uh, there, may be, there may be a trim pot at some point on this board but I might just have to um, sacrifice access to it because if you look at the receiver board, the receiver board is going to have two bandpass filters and the bandpass filters are each going to have a miniature trimmer, trim cap sorry. So I want those trim caps on the bandpass filters for the receiver on the top board. So that determines that the bottom board is going to be my transmitter and the top board is going to be my receiver. The other benefit of the layout that I've chosen is that the oscillators are on the top board or on the, on the receiver board and that was a deliberate choice because again I'm going to have trim caps to trim the frequency of the two crystal oscillators and I want them on the top. That is where my design thinking is at for this little rig. I haven't changed anything on the schematic which is here. And uh, uh, the only thing that I have realised, sorry, that's not it, this is it here. The only thing that I have realised is that I'm missing a side tone. So I've got to squeeze a side tone in somewhere. But I think I can do that in a pretty compact fashion. And for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and get these boards so that the top one is drilled and uh, it can be stacked. And then I'm just going to clean one or both of them up, probably the receiver board. I'll clean it up front and back and I'll be ready to start laying it out. All right, so now that I've got the holes drilled for the 0.1 inch headers for this top board, now the fun starts. So I'm going to hand draw the pads that I'm going to need to implement each of these circuit blocks. All right, well, this is a tedious part of the job. So uh, I'm going to leave you and I'll show you the finished product in just a minute. This card will take you to another video that shows you the complete end-to-end -end process for making this board. Once it's etched and washed, cleaned up, the board is done. Thanks for watching this second part of a CW QRP transceiver scratch build project. In part three, I'll build out this board and test each of the receiver stages one by one so that we get to a working receiver. Please hit like and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss the series. Thanks for watching. See you next time.